everybody, Nick here from Nick's Taxes. And before we get into today's video, I ask you to just do it. If you know what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about Nike, I'm talking about smashing that like button. Really appreciate it, just helps my channel grow. Uh, today's video, we're gonna be talking about the childcare benefit bump up. We're also gonna be talking about Bitcoin and investments. We're also gonna be talking a little bit more about the CRA and your CRB applications and a little bit of stuff revolving around that. Before we get started, please just do it. I hope you did it during that little spiel, but let's get into the video. Uh, going forward, I'm gonna be making some more videos now that kind of, kind of tax season is over for, for us here in Canada. So my question is for you guys, what kind of content do you wanna have? My next video, I'm planning on making a Q&A sort of video. So if you have any questions about anything related to what we've been talking about on this channel, please leave them in the comments below. My next video, I'm gonna go through these comments and I'm gonna answer as many questions as I can. So if you have a CRB question, if you have a disability question, if you have general investing question, anything of that nature, let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to get to as many as I can in the next video. I will also uh, throw it up on my Instagram. So if you're following me on Instagram, um, I'll have the questions up there as well at some point this week. So make sure you're following me there at Nick's Taxes and also I'm on Facebook. Okay, the first thing I wanna talk about today is the new Canada Child Care Benefit. So ed eligible families with children under the age of six can expect to receive some more money from the Child Care Benefit in 2021. As you know, people with families uh, with a certain income threshold uh, receive these Canada Child Care Benefits, CCB. It's calculated based off of your tax return. And it was announced uh, in May, like last week, that there's gonna be a new Canada Child Care Benefit Young Child Supplement. And that's gonna be paid out this month in May. The extra cash is up to $1,200 per child under the age of six. The goal is to help with unpredictable expenses due to the COVID-19 pandemic, of course it is. So they want you to put this towards things like childcare, meals, clothes, at-home activities, so on and so forth, just to kind of help you uh, roll with the times. So families that are already receiving the Canada Child Care Benefit, they do not need to take any action to get the additional benefit. But that said, they must file their 2019 and 2020 tax returns. The earlier you file your tax returns, the easier this is. If you haven't filed your 2020 taxes, do it now. Or if you're filing, if you're filing late, like if you're filing now, uh, you're gonna get a delay in these benefits. But make sure you do that as soon as possible. Those who haven't filed can still qualify and um, yeah, just complete your returns as soon as possible. So. The eligible families need to have a net income of $120,000 or less, and you'll end up receiving four $3,000 payments for each child you have under the age of six, with two of those payments starting at the end of May. The goal right now is May 28th, 2021. There will also be two more payments that will come out, and those will happen July 30th, and then the next one will go um, at the end of October of 2021. In a press release, the CRA said that this additional childcare benefit is expected to benefit about 1.6 million Canadian families and about 2.1 million children under the age of six. So that's great news if you have a small family or a young family, I guess. Next thing I wanna cover is with the CRB applications, some have been asking um, about the time frame that they've been receiving regarding uh, verifying their applications. And the CRA has come out to say that the CRA has been slow because they've been receiving two to three times more calls um, with tax questions during the 2021 tax season, which um, because they're having more calls, they are a little bit slower on processing things the CRA says they received significantly higher volume of calls from taxpayers this season compared to a year ago. And as a result, wait times and access to services have also increased. 
Well, if you remember in a previous video, we talked about what the CRA was doing to help with these wait times. They wanted to cut down wait times this season. They ended up installing a new callback feature. They hired more employees to handle the phones. Um, and it sounds like we're really happy that they did because it would have been even slower if they didn't implement any of these things. But what we've seen is a dramatic increase in calls. So even though that they've increased their capacity, the number of calls has increased that much more. And so we're seeing a huge delay in calling to the CRA. Unfortunately, a lot of the questions that you guys have involve you calling the CRA and talking directly to an agent to get your matter sorted out. CRA has also said, obviously the most common reason Canadians are calling over the past year has been regarding the uh, COVID benefits. And they're just, you know, asking about all the different benefits that are going on and it's leading to delays. They also had an issue where the CRA locked out a lot of people's accounts uh, right around the tax deadline at the end of April. And that led to even more individuals and accountants calling into the CRA, just increasing the volume. So uh, a lot of things not going right from the CRA's perspective, but still do the best you can on your part by making sure that you're filing on time. And if you need to call the CRA, do so kind of at the beginning of the day, as soon as the phone lines open, you wanna be able to call or try uh, later at night with those extended uh, call hours. Another thing, uh, we've talked about the disability tax credit, and I have a link if you wanna learn more about that and see if you qualify. I've made many videos, but the CRA announced with their budget that they're going to extend this year what qualifies as a disability, uh, looking more on the mental capacity side of things. So um, if you have an issue with your mental state, uh, the CRA is increasing what they are deeming a disability going forward. So again, I'll have the link in the description uh, if you wanna see if you qualify and work with Grants International to see if you qualify for that disability tax credit now that they've expanded the scope of what they're considering to be a disability. Again, if you have any questions or something that you want me to answer in my next video, please let me know in the comments below. But one thing that we did talk about is looking at investing in Bitcoin. So I'm gonna be making some videos on that in the near future. I'm also gonna be looking at setting up a Bitcoin account within our YouTube account so we can see um, together what it looks like to invest in cryptocurrency and in Bitcoin and I'll have that kind of set up for you and you can follow along. And I'm looking forward to that series. But as you may know or may not know, when you trade in Bitcoin, I've talked about this in a Bitcoin tax video, Trading Bitcoin, you are subject to tax, whether you're trading Bitcoin to another cryptocurrency or buying Bitcoin and then turning it back into cash. These are taxable events from the Canadian CRA perspective, which means any gain that you have, you're gonna have to pay either business tax or capital gains tax, depending on if this is more of a business or more of an investment. Unfortunately, as of right now, there's no way to trade cryptocurrency within a tax preferred account such as a registered retirement savings plan or a tax-free savings account. There are though a few ways to go around that and so I'm going to talk about those real quickly right now if that's something that you're interested in. Kind of the workarounds around this, if you want to trade cryptocurrencies uh, from a tax-free perspective, one thing that you can look at is by investing in an ETF that deals with Bitcoin. So one of the most direct ways of getting exposure to Bitcoin is through Purpose Bitcoin Canada ETF. Trades on the stock exchange btcc.b. And this ETF buys and stores Bitcoin and converts it into um, units basically for you. Each unit right now for this ETF represents about 0 0.0001696 Bitcoin. So while you can't go and exchange your ETF unit for Bitcoin, you can trade these units on the stock exchange. And so the value of these ETF units move in tandem with the price of Bitcoin. So for example, since um, February 18th to April 15th, the purpose ETF increased 18%, while Bitcoin price during that same time period increased 18.7%. So it pretty much follows Bitcoin. Since then, uh, both of them have declined a little bit, 
But if you invest in Bitcoin through this ETF and you sold and you made that 18%, that's all tax free in Canada, um, except for the ETF management fee, which I believe is a 1% uh, fee. But if you're buying and selling and you, know, you sell at whatever point, that all becomes tax free once you sell because it's an ETF, it's not directly Bitcoin. Another way that you can kind of invest in Bitcoin without directly investing in Bitcoin is by looking at um, crypto mining companies. One of them is Hive Blockchain Technologies. It's on the Venture TSX um, under code HIVE. What this company does is they mine Bitcoin and Ethereum and it basically gives you a diversified effect. It earns revenue by processing transactions on the blockchain and selling the crypto it has mined and stored as inventory. This stock uh, actually increased 183% between February 1 and February 18th of 2021. Imagine almost 200% gain in like 18 days, just insane. And lastly, another way to kind of look at, get exposure to Bitcoin um, and not directly dealing with it, but also getting tax preferred treatment it's by investing in pro payment processing firms. And so many companies have actually started processing and accepting crypto payments. The payment processing firm would earn money through commission on every transaction. So as crypto transactions have a high value, they tend to give you higher commissions. So you might have heard PayPal and Square, they are now processing cryptocurrency transactions. But now there's a new Canadian alternative and that's called Nuvi, trades on the TSX NVEI. And this started trading just back in September of 2020, and it provides technology solutions to merchants and partners worldwide and has benefited from the high volume of e-commerce transactions, obviously. It has acquired the financial technology and crypto start startup Simplex to grow its alternative payment options. And so even if the cryptocurrency frenzy ends, they'll still benefit from e-commerce growth. But if this cryptocurrency trend continues and more people use crypto as a form of payment, then you can see companies like this really benefiting. And so obviously this is just a stock and you can invest in this stock as per usual within your RSP, TFSA, registered account, whatever you want. So those are some options to kind of touch Bitcoin without actually touching the actual coin. Um, and we can talk about this more in future videos, but uh, I'm running out of time here. So that's all for today's video. If you got value again, just do it. Smash that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. Consider subscribing and I will see you guys in the next video. I'm Nick from Nick's Taxes. Happy taxing.